Ari Mitchell feels invisible at her Brooklyn High School. Her hair is too flat, her style too preppy, and her personality too quiet. In outside school, Ari feels outshined by her beautiful, confident best friend, Summer. Their friendship is as complex and confusing as Ari's relationship with her troubled older sister, Evelyn, a former teenage mom whose handsome firefighter husband fills Ari's head with guilty fantasies. When an unexpected inheritance enables Ari to transfer to an elite Manhattan prep school, she makes a wealthy new friend, Lee. Lee introduces Ari to the glamorous side of New York and to her cousin, Blake. Ari doesn't think she stands a chance, but amazingly, Blake asks her out. As their romance heats up, they find themselves involved in an intense, consuming relationship. Ari's family worries that she's losing touch with the important things in life, like family, hard work, and planning for the future. Meanwhile, Summer warns her that what she feels for Blake is just an infatuation, not real love. But Ari's world is awash with new colors filled with a freshness and excitement she hasn't felt in years. When misfortune falls Blake's family, he pulls away and Ari's world drains of color. As she struggles to get over the breakup, Ari must finally ask herself, were their feelings true love or something else? Hi guys, this is Jessica with Chapter Chicks and I am here to do a book review. Um, first of all, just let me kind of apologize for... Um, not being around this week, I've been having, I've been like harboring this book review. I have a couple other book reviews that I have to do. Um, I just kind of took a break for a week, you know. Um, I've been reading a lot recently, doing a lot of stuff, so took a little break. Been um, working out a lot, going to my boyfriend's house a lot, so I haven't really been getting a lot done. But I am back to do more, and I only took a week this time. Normally when I take a break, it's a much longer break, so I'm pretty proud, I'm proud of myself. But I figured I am getting ready to go work out in 20 minutes, so I'm going to kick this review out real fast, um, because if I don't just sit down and record it, then I'm never going to actually do it. Um, it is over Other Words for Love by Lorraine Zago Rosenthal. And then I also have um, the finished copy here, which I didn't read this copy because this is the copy that we gave away. And... Um, yeah, so I'm going to be sending you, the winner, this book out really shortly. But I just got it the other day, so there's your book. So I'm going to be doing the review holding the book that I actually read, The Ark, because this is the one I had the bond with. You know, this is my little baby book. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started and quit blabbing. This book was published on January 11th of 2011. Um, for those of you participating in the Story Sirens 2011 Debut Author Challenge, this is a debut author that is accepted on that challenge, so yay for that. Um, it's published by Delacorte, Delacorte Press for Young Readers. So, I, um, I like them a lot. They publish some really good books. And there are 368 pages in the U.S. hardcover. Okay, so um, now I'm going to get started with the review. This is the non-spoiler review. I don't think there's going to be a spoiler one on this one, just because I don't really have time to do one. So um, let me just start off by saying that this book is nothing like I expected it was going to be. Um, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't really looking forward to reading it. Like, I was really looking forward to reading it, but then, like, at the same time, I wanted to read other things at the same, like, you know. Because um, it's called Other Words for Love, and it's the way it sounds is like kind of like just all about love, like nothing really like cool. But just it's just a good book, but it just wasn't the kind of book that I was in the mood for at the time. But when I picked it up, I was really wrong. Um, Twenty pages in, I knew it was not anything like I expected it to be. I kind of expected it to be like more teeny boppery, and it wasn't at all. And then about fifty to seventy-five pages in. I knew that I was in love with this book because it is a really, really good book. One thing though is I have no idea what the title has to do with the book. If I miss that, I know a lot of people are reading this now because it's been getting a lot of good reviews. If you know why the book is called Other Words for Love, message me and let me know because I have no idea. I kind of thought that the beginning was a little slow in this book just because the synopsis talks about a boy named Blake and it kind of makes it seem like the whole book is about Blake. So I waited a really long time to find Blake because Blake's not in it at first. And so I thought the book was really slow. 
But then after I finished it, I realized that if the book hadn't been that way, like if the beginning was not that way, this would not have been as good of a book. She sets up a like, great character, like a character that you really know and you really understand before she dives into the plot. And like, it's still all plot, like, but before she dives into like the main climax and the main plot, she sets up great characters and characters that you really know and understand. In this book, I had so many Romeo and Juliet moments because if, um, not like, not like as bad, not like the star-crossed lovers or blah, 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 but if you have ever read or watched any Romeo and Juliet movies, I personally read Romeo and Juliet, and my favorite one is, um, the one with Leonardo DiCaprio, the movie, and, um, you know what's gonna happen, but you still, like, just hope that something changes this time, something this time around, the time you're reading it or watching it or whatever, that something is going to be different. And um, it says right on the back that Blake breaks up with Aerie. And you just like hope that it's not going to happen. As you're reading it, you just feel like everything is going to be so perfect. And like you just cannot see like like it's going to be terrible. And you know you're going to be heartbroken just as much as Aerie is heartbroken. So I really like that because I haven't really felt that very often in books. Another thing I liked was that... um. We, are, we have all had or will have experiences similar to Aerie, and I thought that that was really cool that she captured that in a way that wasn't saying, hey, we're all, we've all had this experience, blah, blah, blah. Like, she told it from, like, a real, as it was happening kind of perspective, and I really, really enjoyed that. It was, so, basically, this book was, it was real, it was heartbreaking, and, like, the way it comes full circle is just really inspiring and I loved it. I really like this book a lot. If you haven't checked it out, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, I don't know whether or not Borders has it for sale or Barnes and Noble, but I'm sure you can find it on Amazon and other things. It, it is so good. And um, we actually did an interview with Lorraine Zagay Rosenthal on our blog, so you should check that out too. Also, um, I wanted to say for parents, you should know that there is mild cursing and ex excessive sexual content in this. So watch out for that if you're trying to let your kids read it. I um, think on the blog I rated it 15 plus. So, But yeah, um, definitely go check this out. It's great. And that's really all I have to say. So I'm Jessica with Chapter Chicks. This was my review over Other Words for Love by Lorraine Zager-Rosenthal. And this chapter was for you. Thanks for watching, guys.